Hey everybody, welcome back to Brainiac Baseball's 1969 Seattle Pilots What If Scenario. Today's matchup is between the Seattle Pilots and the Boston Red Sox. On the mound for the Seattle Pilots is Steve Barber making his season debut. And pitching for the Red Sox today is Jim Lonberg, also making his season debut. And so... Yesterday was opening day here at Fenway Park, and we got off to a great start. Um, Tommy Harper hit a home run to lead off the ball game, and I'm like, hey, this is going to be easy. But unfortunately, when we got to the bottom half of the first, uh, Gary Ding Dong Bell uh, gave up two runs. He walked six in his start and two and third innings, and uh, it was really just not meant to be. So... I hope that's not indicative of what the season is going to be like. I know we do not have the best uh, rotation. We don't have a deep bench. We barely have, uh, you know, above average uh, uh, hitters. So uh, it's going to be rough this year. Um, as I mentioned yesterday, uh, pilots the all too brief history, uh, and that's what we tend to remedy here with this scenario we're gonna uh play the first uh expansion year for the pilots and then we're gonna keep them in seattle uh, all the way through until the mariners um come into place until in uh, 1977 so what that means is there's no milwaukee brewers uh until 1977 that's how we're gonna play this out uh so Let's go ahead and get started with today's game. As always, I appreciate everyone following along. Like and or subscribe to the channel. Uh, if you're not familiar with my uh, replay series, I have a uh, Detroit Tigers uh, replay series that started in 1980. We're up to 1984. That's going to start uh, in uh, 2023, spring training. We'll do the 1984 season. And then we're also concurrently... Uh, playing the 1980 Detroit Lions alternate history where I'm trying to change the course of history for the Lions and get them to the Super Bowl, something which they've never done in my entire existence on the planet Earth. So we have Steve Barber on the mound. He is a lefty. As you can see, no stats. Uh, the only pitcher to get out of yesterday's game unscathed was Jerry Stevenson. And he might be itching for a starting spot after a couple rounds through the uh, starting rotation. Here's our lineup today versus the right-hander, Jim Lonborg. Uh, we're going to mix it up a little bit because why wouldn't we? We're going to get Steve Hovley in there in center field. Uh, he pinch hit yesterday and drove in two runs. That was great. And Fred Stanley will be at second base. He is a rookie, uh, and he is the best rated defensive second baseman that we have which is not saying much and then ray oiler who's great at playing shortstop will be in there but he can't hit worth a lick everybody else is the same okay let's go ahead and do the official lineup rundown for the seattle pilots batting leadoff in right field is tommy harper batting second in left field is mike hegan Batting third at third base is Rich Rollins. Batting cleanup playing first base is Don Mincher. Batting fifth and catching is Jerry McNertney. Batting sixth in center field is Steve Hovley. Batting seventh at second base is Fred Stanley. And batting eighth playing shortstop is Ray Euler. The pitcher Steve Barber is in the ninth spot. Let's go ahead and take a look at Jim Lonborg for the Boston Red Sox last year, 68. Uh, he made 17 starts. He went 6-10 with a 4.29 ERA. Uh, you can imagine how terrible that is when, uh, I believe, most starting pitchers' uh, ERAs were under 3. He had 73 strikeouts in 113 and the third innings pitched. Opponents are batting 216 against him. That's amazing. Batting 216 with a 429 ERA. Four complete games, one shutout. His fastball tops out at 89 miles an hour. Uh, he is a fly ball pitcher. Uh, as you can see here, 60, 
66% of the time. He's got four pitches, only one good one. That is the fastball rated an 85. Overall rated an 81, the 26-year-old right-hander uh, goes to arbitration at the end of the year. How is that possible that he's making a major league salary of $290,000, but he's arbitration eligible? I don't know. Okay, let's take a look at the Red Sox defense. Looks like they've got a couple different players in there today. They have a good catcher, Joe Askew, behind the plate with a 90 rating. And uh, their second baseman is Mike Andrews today, who was off yesterday. So, Okay, here's Tommy Harper. Let off the ball game yesterday with a home run. Let's see how he does today. He takes a walk. Now, do we dare steal? We tried yesterday, and Harper was thrown out. Oh, wow. Joe Askew has a 92 arm, so we are not going to test him here. We're going to let Mike Hegan take a cut. He also had a base hit in the first inning yesterday. Keegan strikes out swinging. So we're going to hit run with uh, Rich Rollins. It's the one good thing he does do. Makes contact. So here's Rich Rollins. One for four on the season. A ground ball. Sharply hit to second. Andrews goes to first. For out number two, we've got Harper in scoring position for Don Mincher. I said yesterday that we should, um, if you could come up with any uh, nicknames for players, put it in the comments below. I'm just going to disqualify uh, Don Mincher's nickname as Don Butt, Butt Mincher. <laughs> Don't say that. Don't. That is not acceptable. He's one for two, though, and he uh, drove in a run with a sack fly. First and second. I'm so immature. It's uh, first and second, two down. Jerry McNertney is up. He went two for four yesterday. He had two hits. That's pretty impressive for a guy that I didn't expect a lot from. He laces it to center field, and it will be caught by the center fielder, Don Locke. So we leave two runners stranded. We go to the bottom of the first inning. Let's take a look at the Red Sox lineup rundown for today's ballgame. Batting leadoff in right field is Reggie Smith. Batting second at third base is Carmen Fanzone. Batting third in left field is Carl Yastrzemski. Batting cleanup in center field is Don Locke. Batting fifth at first base is George Scott. Batting sixth at shortstop is Rico Petroselli. Batting seventh at second base is Mike Andrews. And batting eighth and catching today is Joe Askew. The pitcher, Jim Lomberg, batting ninth. Let's take a look at Steve Barber, left-handed starter. I've said it many times before, not a big fan of left-handed starters in baseball mogul. I tend to think they get battered. Uh, pretty well by right-handed hitters. So uh, it's never really to an advantage, in my opinion. Uh, the only left-hander I've ever had any luck with is Mickey Lolich uh, in this game. So uh, nonetheless, here he is. Uh, last year for the Yankees, he started 19 games. Went 6-5 and five with a 3.23 ERA, 87 Ks, and 128 and a third innings pitched. Opponents are batting 255. Three comp complete games, one shutout. Fastball, pretty good. Tops out at 92 miles an hour. Uh, ground ball percentage is high, over 50% of the time. Uh, the sinker is his best pitch, rated a 90, and the slider an 82. So there's a two pitch pitcher that's above average. Steve Barber's overall rating is an 81. The 31 year old lefty. Goes to free agency in 1971. Uh, this just popped into my head. I wonder if, because so many pitchers uh, were pitching well in this era, uh, coming off the year of the pitcher in 68, I wonder if that's why so many of them are just above average in rating because there were so many that were good um, and in the same, uh, I guess, pitching war, right? So I, I wonder about that. Okay. Um, let's take a look at our defense. A little bit better than yesterday. 
Um, I didn't realize until we started yesterday's game that Tommy Harper is terrible in right field, and he doesn't play anywhere in the outfield good. Uh, that is his best position. And we do have, at second base today, Fred Stanley, who's um, the best second base option we have, even though he's clearly not ready for the majors. Okay, Reggie Smith leading off. Reggie Smith had two dongs yesterday. As Barber walks, while wow, we had 10 pitching walks yesterday. Not great to start off that way today. Runner on first. Will Smith be going? Here's Carmen Fanzone, and he strikes out looking on the slider. One down. Will he be going here with Yaz at the plate? We'll find out. One down, runner on first. An infield single to short. That'll move Smith up. So Yaz is second hit on the season. And a runner in scoring position now for the center fielder, Don Locke. Locke took an over yesterday. It's tough to do the way they batted us around. He pops it up on the infield, and our catcher, McNerty, makes the catch. So on the verge of getting out of this, two down, runners on first and second. George Scott, last year a 171 hitter versus lefties. And he strikes out. There we go. Steve Barber giving up a hit and a walk and then coming back and striking out two batters. So we go to the top of the second inning. Steve Hovley leading off. I like this baseball card a lot. Um, I just like the colors, the pose. I, I'm going to try to get this in my collection if I can as Hovley flies out to center field. If anybody's watching this that has that card that would be willing to uh, either trade it to me or sell it to me, I would definitely be interested. Okay, here is uh, Fred Stanley with one down. Made his Major League debut yesterday, coming in defensively. Popping it up at home plate. And an error by the catcher, Joe Askew. So, so much for having a 90 rating. We have Stanley on first. He has average speed. Man, I would love to have uh, Euler just lay down a bunt here, but we have to let him take a cut. Look at it, 58 contact. Um, I guess he's just got to take a cut. 2-2 two -two count, and he strikes out on a slider up in the zone. Okay, well, now I kind of feel like we should send Stanley with the pitcher up, right? Oh, God, it's only a 55% chance of success. So uh, we're just going to have him swing away. Steve Barber, not a good hitting pitcher. 051 last year for the Yankees. Sharply hit, ground ball to third, and there's out number three. So we strand another runner, go to the bottom of the second inning, no score. Rico Petroselli leading off, followed by Andrews and Azkew. Petroselli popping it up to second. Stanley catches it on the fringe of the grass for out number one. That's going to bring up Mike Andrews. Andrews got into the game as a defensive replacement yesterday. Hits a high fly ball to the warning track, right to the wall, in fact in left field where Hegan makes the catch. Two quick outs for Barbert. Could we get a one, two, three inning? I don't know if we had one of those yesterday. Joe Askew, sharply hit ball to short. And an error by the shortstop. Euler, that's why you're in there, man. You're in there for defensive purposes. And he blows it. That's all right, the, catch, uh, the pitcher's up now. So with the catcher on first to Jim Lomberg at the plate. I keep pronouncing his name incorrectly. It's Lonborg. Here we go. 2-2 two -two count. A ground ball. Sharply hit to first. Mincher picks it up. Steps on the bag. And we go to the top of the third. So both teams have committed an error. I don't know how the um, stadium effects are for Fenway Park defensively. Maybe we'll check that out tomorrow. I like the fact that we did that last year, even though the primary reason why we did it last year is I had my own, I say last year, but I mean the 1983 uh, Detroit Tigers season replay. I was because I did um, create my own stadium effect uh, 
equation. And I thought it turned out pretty good. Here is uh, Tommy Harper leading off the top of the third. A ground ball to short. Pilots yet to get a hit today. I got off of Lomborg. One down. Here's Mike Hegan. Hegan. Fly ball into center field. It will be caught. I thought that might loop in. Instead, a good running catch by their center fielder, Don Locke. Two down for Rich Rollins, and Rollins lines out to first. That would have been a double down the line. Instead, just a frozen rope right at the first base. We're going to the bottom of the third. Totally different ball game than yesterday as Reggie Smith steps in. Barber jams him inside as Stanley makes the catch just on the outfield grass at second. So there's one down. Back to Carmen, fan zone. Sharply hit ground ball to third. Game is moving along. If there's two down, with Yaz up, Hall of Famer Yastrzemski. Look at all the sinkers that Barber's throwing to Yaz as he grounds out to Stanley. A 1-2-3 inning. There we go. We go to the top of the fourth inning with Don Mincher leading off, followed by McNertney and Hovley. Here's Don Mincher. Really the only player on the team with any power. He gaps it into right center field up against the short wall for a double. That is the first double by any player. Uh, on our team. Take a look there. As he's now two for three on the season. Good job by Don Mincher. We're accepting all trade offers right now, though. So I don't get used to these players, folks. Here's uh, Jerry McNertney. I think is hitting to the right side still a thing? Yeah, we're going to try to push it to the right side here and get Mincher 90 feet away if we can. One, two count, and he strikes out swinging. Oh, man, come on. One down. Okay, we're going to let Hovley swing away. He came up in a tough spot yesterday and drove in two runs, so maybe he's got that clutch gene. He gets the job done moving Mincher over, but there's two outs and the rookie Fred Stanley up. Of all the years of baseball cards I definitely would rank the 1972 series the psychedelic style um, where clearly they were tripping balls when they were making these cards um, but it's definitely one of my favorite it, it t definitely top three Fred Stanley takes a walk third walk issued by Lonberg makes sense though when you got Roy Ray Euler coming up this guy I'm always just satisfied if he makes contact. That's like a plus. And he pops it up. At least he put it in play. Anything can happen. Including an out. And we go to the bottom of the fourth. So we cannot convert. We strand to go to the bottom of the fourth inning. Steve Barber moving along. Pitching pretty well. There's only one lefty in the lineup. And uh, so far he looks pretty good. Here's Don Locke leading off. Oh, he walks him. Crap. Second walk issued by Barber. We are way ahead of yesterday's game, though. So the leadoff man on first. Here is George Scott. And a stolen base by a, a sub-average base runner. That's his first on the season. He's, the most he's ever had in a year is nine, so... Definitely taking a chance. I guess if you get runners on, maybe you got to go in a game like today. So runner in scoring position here is George Scott. Scott pops it straight up. That is high on the infield. Landing in the glove of our shortstop, Ray Euler. There's one down. I almost want to set up a double play here, but we're going to... We're going to play it straight away. Here we go. Rico Petroselli. Walks. Okay, well, I'm okay with that in theory. Uh, I like the double play 
possibility. Also, we're going to pull the outfield in. Oh, shh. That's not even an option here. Yeah, so there's been a lot of updates um, in the, um, the newest version. So they've removed that. And I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. Although the, you should have the option to play the outfield in, in any situation. And then just tweak where the ball goes in, the, in those situations. But, all right, whatever. Uh, here's uh, Mike Andrews. One down, runners on first and second. Ground ball to first. That could be a double play. Can we turn it? Oh, there by a first baseman. Come on. Don Mincher boots it. Can't make the play. And this is about to go sideways here. These are the things that an expansion, an expansion team cannot do. Um, we have to pull the infield in because this is going to be a one-run game. No, you know what? We do have the catcher running, right? So maybe... Maybe we stay back and try to turn two. This is our best infield, although they've made two errors today. I think maybe that's the way to go. We play back. We try to turn two. We give up a run if, if necessary. All right. That's our strategy. The... the um, the uh, pitcher is up next, but you know if we pull the infield in and we get a force out, then we're probably going to get the pitcher out. Okay, that's the strategy. My bad. Sometimes you got to talk it out. So the infield, we're pulling it in. Let's see if we can get a uh, a sinker here from Barber that turns into a double play. Here, here we go. Nope, that's a line drive to center. Face it. All that for nothing. One nothing, Boston. We'll pull the infield in now with uh, Jim Lonborg up. Two two count and a base. Hit. Oh no! Ground ball to short and a double play. All right. Well, the Red Sox take the lead one to nothing on the Askew single. We go to the top of the fifth inning with our pitcher Barber leading off. Full count. And he ropes it into center field. That gets all the way to the triangle out there. And that's a double for our pitcher. Nicely done. He's trying to get that run back all by himself. All right. Second hit only by the Pilots today. Here's Tommy Harper. He's our best hitter. We got to let him swing away. He doesn't take the bat off his shoulder. So that really feels like um, a bad omen. Here's uh, Mike Keegan. And a base up the middle. Will Barber score on that? Lock up with it. And he holds at third. Oh, man. Now that's the bad news. The good news is we have our best contact hitter up. So we are definitely going to hit and run. Um, first and third. One down. At the very least, we'll stay out of the double play. And a base hit to right field. So Barber scores easily. Hegan goes to third, and it's all tied at one. Okay, I like the way things are going. Let's see if we can take the lead on a sack fly. Mincher had one yesterday. That gave us the two to nothing lead in the first. That'll get it done. Crushes it to center field, 330 feet. Pika tags and scores, and we have the lead, 2-1. to one. All right, so it's 2-1. to one. We've broke through against Lonborg. Runner on first, here's McNurtney. And a slow roller to first, out number three. So... A nice, solid inning for the Pilots. We go to the bottom of the fifth inning, up a run. And we're back to the top of the lineup with Reggie Smith. Now, Barber has a 62 endurance. Um, so I think he could probably get, I don't know, 80 to 90 pitches, perhaps? And he's at 80 now, so yeah, he, he could... He, Probably will be tired by the end of this inning. 
And a base hit that gets past Euler at short. So Euler, not the defensive genius that we thought. Runner on first. It's a leadoff man. Will Smith be going? Fan zone, not a bunner. So we're going to play straight away. What else can we do, really? Ground ball to short. This could be two. Yes, a double play. There we go. Now, Barber is officially tired at 92 pitches. Pardon me while I take a little sip of my gin and juice. All right. Um, oh, that's the good stuff. Okay, so uh, two down. Barber tired at 92 pitches. Here's Yaz. Toughest hitter on the team. And he proves it there by lacing it off the wall. Off the green monster. Quickly back into the infield by Hegan. Holds Yaz to a single. So now we're playing with fire here as Barber is tired. I would love to get a another out here, but we, it might not happen. We might have to pull him. Here's Don Locke and a base hit. Yaz goes to third. First and third. Two down. George Scott only batted 171 last year uh, in limited duty against lefties. I don't know if that makes any difference or not for 1969, but we're gonna we're gonna pitch to him. I mean, what else can we do here? First and third, two outs, and the ground ball up the middle. Euler making the play, and Barber gets out of the inning. You know, like I very easily could have gone to the bullpen, but who do we have in the bullpen that's better? than what Barber has done for us today. <laughs> um, so I think we made the right decision. We go to the top of the sixth inning. Two to one, Seattle. Okay, here's Steve Hovley leading off. 0 for 2 today. And he walks. Fourth walk for Lonborg. This is absolutely a bunting situation for Fred Stanley, who's still looking for his first hit as a major leaguer. Let's see if we can't get Hovley over. Stanley helping us do things right. Base hit. Hovley holds it second, and that is the first career single for Fred Stanley as he tosses the ball out of play. First and second. Nobody. Oh, well, let's bunt again because this guy sucks. Hey, man, it's all about small ball today. First and second, here's Ray Euler. Let's see if he can lay down a bunt. Full count, right in front of home plate, and he gets the sack, it works. I mean, that's great, second and third. One out, and Barber coming out of the ball game. He did get a double today, which was amazing. Okay, so we have a righty. That means we have one lefty on the bench. And that lefty is Steve Whitaker. He will be our pinch hitter today. He went 0 for 1 yesterday with a walk. And um, their infield is still in. Now he does have pretty good power. Rated an 88. So maybe he can get us a sack fly. That's what we're asking for here. 0-1 count to Whitaker, and that will get it done as he hits it to left center field. 288 feet, Hovley tags. We will not send Stanley, and we increase the lead to 3-1. to one. Small ball working for us as Lundberg hits the century mark in pitches. Runner on second, here's Tommy Harper with two outs. Brown ball to short, and that will do it. You know what? I think we will use Steve Whitaker in right field since Harper uh, just batted. We'll increase our, improve our defense in right. All right. 
right, make a little switcheroo there. Let's double check. Whitaker's good, right? Yeah, he's 82. He's got a 94 arm. Whoa, he's got a cannon out there. I did not know that. So he's a great defensive replacement at any position. And we need to make a change to our pitcher. Who do we bring in here? Uh, it's the sixth inning. Let's bring in Gene Brabender. Mean Gene Braun Brabender. He is a 27-year-old righty. Last year he made 15 starts for the O's, going 6-7, and seven, a 3-32 ERA. 92 strikeouts in 124 and two-third innings pitched. Three complete games, two shutouts. He had three saves also. Fastball tops out at 87 miles an hour. Ground ball percentage, 46.8. His uh, slider is his best pitch rated at 90. His sinker is at 82. And even his two-seamer is not that bad. So he's rated an 82 overall. It goes to arbitration at the end of the year. Okay, so um, I like this guy's statistics. First time we've seen him. Let's see if he can get the job done here as Rico Petroselli will lead off. Followed by Andrews and Askew. Base hit up the middle for Petroselli. Sixth hit for the Red Sox. Lead off man is on. We're going to pull third base in. Andrews, a good bunner. Maybe they'll start playing small ball. We'll find out. Nope. Ground ball to second, Stanley. Double play. It's our third double play today. So despite the two errors, we've turned three double plays. Only three pitches. The first two batters for Brabender. Here's Joe Askew. He drove in the only run today. And a base hit to left. Yeah, falls in in front of Keegan. And they're going to pinch hit. For the pitcher, it's going to be Hal King, who started at catcher yesterday. Went one for two, a couple of walks, scored a couple of runs. We only have one lefty in the bullpen, and we really can't do the lefty-righty matchups. So, Broadbender is going to have to face Hal King. We are going to guard the lines, though. Here we go. Runner on first, and he pops it up. On the infield, right near second base where Stanley makes the catch. So, a great job by Brabend. Here we go to the top of the seventh. Pilots are up 3-1. to one. They're going to bring in a reliever. It's Ron Klein. He's your dad's insurance agent. Uh, he pitched yesterday, and he, technically he shouldn't be pitching today. He went one in the third innings, and he walked you. Gave up a couple of hits. So not a great job by Klein. Here's Mike Egan leading off. Striking out on a curveball. It was low and outside. One out for Rich Rollins. Two for seven on the year. Hits a line drive right at the shortstop. This is a soft line drive. The butterfly could have rode that right to the mitt. Two down. Don Mincher's up. And Mincher gets a base hit past the shortstop. Six hits for the Pilots today. Mincher on first for Jerry McNertney. He's got an 0 for today. And he rips it into left. That falls in for a hit. I feel like just about any ball hit on a line to left falls in. So we'll take the base hit, first and second. Maybe Klein is struggling a little bit. Here's Hovley. Uh, he got a base. Oh yeah, his one hit came off of uh, Klein yesterday. Uh, he wants nothing to do with him. He walks him to get to Stanley, who was safe on an infield single. Uh, it was a bunt single. Stanley can blow this baby open right now. Base is loaded. Two down. Let's see if Stanley's clutch. And the moment's too big for him as he taps it right back to Klein, who tosses him out. So we go to the bottom of the seventh inning. 
Uh, I guess we're going to leave Brabender in there for one more, right? I mean, this is the era. I think <laughs> James was giving me shit on uh, the Facebook page that we have 11 bullpen, our, our total pitchers on our roster, which did not happen back in the day. But, I mean, what am I going to do? Have a deeper bench? We don't have a lot of hitters. So we're going to go with 11 guys. But, they, you know, because of the pinch hitters, I mean, they pitched a couple innings. It was more strategic. Here's Reggie Smith leading off as Bra Bender gets him to pop it up to second base. It's the old two seam fastball. One down, here is Carmen Fanzone. 0 2 count, and he strikes out. It's amazing how much better your team can be when you don't walk 10 batters. Two outs, here's Yaz. Yes, three for six on the season. He dumps it down the left field line, and he gets held to another single. Not a lot of doubles in this uh, stadium unless you gap it. So, yes, on base again. He's four for seven as Don Locke steps in. 3-0 count, and he walks. Okay, uh, that's going to bring up the go-ahead run which is George Scott. I think we have to trust Brabender here to get this out. Um, he walked him on four straight pitches that weren't even close. I wonder if in some way the game strategically does that. I mean, I don't know. Uh, okay, here's George Scott. First and second, two outs. 3-1 count. And he walks. All right. I have no idea why the game does this but uh, I mean is that a sign I mean is this guy completely lost it I mean he's got a 69 endurance he should go for a while um, a base hit would tie the ball game we could bring in Jack Acker who's um, really not very highly rated but I guess if you walk the bases loaded you probably got to come out. So we're going to bring in Jack Acker. Here he is. Pitched for Oakland uh, and previously Kansas City A's. Uh, it was with him for the, his whole career. Did not have a good year. 4-4 four and four with a 4-10 ERA all in relief. 44 strikeouts in 74 and two-third innings. He did have 12 saves for the A's. Fastball tops out at 86 miles an hour. Ground ball percentage 45.4%. He's got one good pitch. That is the sinker. 28-year-old righty goes to arbitration at the end of the year. Okay. Well, I don't know. Um, I guess... Well, I guess we have to play it straight away here. Rico Petroselli could easily hit a grand slam. Two down, bases loaded. Here we go. Rico Petroselli. Ground ball to short. And Euler throws him out. Woo, I was sweating it over here. We get through it. I guess we made the right call. We go to the top of the eighth inning. We've got Ray Euler leading off. 0 for 2 today. He had a sacrifice bunt. He gets a hold of that one. 370 feet. That's about as far as he can hit it. I have a feeling. And that's one down. That feels like a home run. One out. Steve Whitaker. Flips it to right. Caught by the right fielder. Reggie Smith. Two down. Uh, I guess we're going to let Acker bat. Or uh, no. You know what? We're, mm, what are we going to do? We're going to take him out. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to take out Acker. Oops. We're going to bring in a pinch hitter. And then we'll bring in Marshall for a two-out save. He won't have to bat, most likely. So let's, uh, who do we, of, these, of this mess, who do we let bat? I guess Wayne Comer, right? Since he's already got a hit. Here's Wayne Comer coming in. Got the brush cut going. Comer is a one for three. 
And he strikes out, so it didn't matter at all. All right. Let's bring in our closer. It's Mike Marshall coming into the ball game. Probably the best pitcher on the team. He did not play in 68 for the Tigers. Uh, of course, that's the year they won the World Series, but he was injured. And you take a look at the numbers from 67. He was phenomenal. On to his way to a pretty damn good career, which included a Cy Young Award. Um, fastball is his best pitch. It's rated in 84. It only tops out at 89. Ground ball percentage is 40.3. Overall rated an 80. He will go to arbitration next year. All right, let's bring him in. Let's set him down here, starting with Mike Andrews. Here's Mike Andrews. 0 for 3 so far this season. And he bloops it into left center field. Is that going to find a hole? A duck start. And I thought for sure he was going to go for 2 on that. The leadoff man is on. Nine hits for the Red Sox. Well, we need another double play here. Here's Joe Askew up. Striking him out. There we go. Good job. As the Red Sox manager is going to send Tony Canigliaro up there to pinch hit for the pitcher Klein. Canigliaro pinch hit yesterday. 0 for 1. We're going to play straight away. 3-2 count, and he walks. Why are there so many damn walks? It is unbelievable. Mm. So frustrating. And now we're in trouble. We can't pull the outfield in anymore, right? Yeah. So all we could do is play it straight away. We could guard the lines, but... Um, maybe we should guard the lines. We can't let that runner... Well, no, uh, because you don't get doubles here, right? Uh, on down the line. So we're going to play straight away. That's our logic. Does not matter? I don't know. Here we go. Mike Marshall. One down. Reggie Smith up. And he goes deep. His third home run on the season. It is now 4-1. to 4-3. to three. Boston. Yeah, there was never anything we were going to be able to do to stop that as Marshall blows the save. Ground ball into the hole at short. Euler makes a good play for out number two. And Yaz will fly out the center. So we got the expansion team blues right now as they bring in their closer, Sparky Lyle. Pitched yesterday. Two innings, gave up a hit. And yet he's not tired for some reason. Here we go, Mike Keegan leading off the top of the ninth. Another walk. Oh, well, we got the hit run guy up, Rich Rollins. Let's hit and run. We've got nothing to lose, and Keegan's got good. Keegan has good speed. And a base hit to right. Yeah, there we go. Keegan goes to third. Don Mincher up, three for four. Well, they're playing back. I can't believe they're not playing in. He's already got a couple sack flies on the season. Let's see if we can get another one out of him here. Oh, one count. Ah, oh, comebacker. Can't turn two, but Hegan has to hold. First and third, one down, and yeah, that's the way the game likes to tease you. Now there's nothing we can do here to prevent a double play from happening. We can request another sack fly, but that's not how it's going to be. I have a feeling. Oh, base hit instead! As Higgins scores, maybe, this, maybe the gameplay has been tweaked a little bit. Run scores, and it's tied at four. And Steve Hovley has a chance here to give us the lead. We're going to let him take a cut. A uh, line drive and a double off Mincher. Yep. Well, I knew the double play was coming one way or another. We go to the bottom of the ninth inning. Game is tied. Marshall... 
will remain in the ball game. All we have is John Morris in the bullpen, who's a lefty. So Marshall might have to go a couple here. Here's Don Locke leading off. A comebacker to Mike Marshall. Tosses it over to first. One down. Next man up is George Scott. Scott skies it on the infield. Stanley makes the catch. Two quick outs for Marshall. This is what we needed from him last inning. As Petroselli steps in and he gets a base hit to right. It can never go easily. 11 hits now for the Sox. That'll bring up Mike Andrews. Winning runs on first. Line drive to left. Caught on the warning track. And we've got free baseball as we head to the top of the 10th inning. Don Newhauser comes in. He is a rookie, never pitched in the majors before. Never gone past single A. Not much to tell you about him other than uh, he's got a 93 mile an hour fastball. Ground ball percentage is 40%. Fastball tops out at 87. He's got a palm ball. Rated a 78. The 21 year old righty goes to arbitration in 71. And Fred Stanley will be the first batter to face Don Neuhauser. So this is a 1974 baseball card here. So he didn't make it to the majors until 73. So he's ahead of schedule here as he walks Stanley, as you might expect. They're pulling third base in because they know exactly what's coming. Let's see if Euler can drop down a bunt. 3-2 count. A comebacker to Newhauser. And Euler gets the job done. Small ball is working out for us today. Staley in scoring position for Steve Whitaker. And then the pitcher's up. All right, Steve Whitaker. One down, runner on second. And a wild pitch. Moves him to third. I feel like they're trying to give it to us here. Whitaker does have power. He does have the availability here to uh, hit a sack fly. Full count. And he walks. That's probably a good play. Not intentional. But it is first and third. Oh, man. What do we do here? Um... Oh, man. All right. We got a pinch hit. Who's got the most power of our boys on the bench? Oops. All right. Power. Danny Walton has 89 power, and he also does have the best. Uh, well, Gus Gill has better contact. but All right. So we're going to pinch hit Danny Walton. Oh, boy. All right. Give us a sack fly, Denny. Infield's in. First and third. One out. And he loops it into center field. Will it be deep enough? We're going to send him 40% chance. Come on. He's got an 87 arm. Oh, man. What would you do? I don't know, as uh, looks like there's some pop-up ad here coming up. I'm going to say no. I don't know. But uh, we're, we're an expansion team. Don't we have to go for it? Aren't we, like, required to go for it to try to win these ball games? Yeah, we're going to go for it. Why not? 40% chance. That probably means, like, negative 10%. We're sending Stanley. He's out at home. Of course he is. Come on, man. All right. We're going to the bottom of the tenth inning. And all we've got is John Morris available. Not great. Pitched yesterday was pretty bad. 
Let's see how he does today. It's the uh, bottom of the lineup, though. Let's see. Jo uh, Joe Askew leading off. Ground ball up the middle. Good range from Euler. Throws him out. And they're going to pinch hit Hawk Harrelson into the ball game. I don't know how this guy's not a starter. He had 35 home runs in 1968 and 109 RBI. And again, it was the year of the pitcher. And this guy can't get a job uh, in the starting lineup. So this feels ominous him coming into the ball game here. First at bat of the season. And Morris gets a comebacker hit to him. Tosses it to first. Nicely done. Back to the top of the lineup with Reggie Smith. Will we be going to the 11th inning? Full count. And a fly ball into foul ground on the third base side. Rollins roaming over. It was actually Euler going all the way to make that play. And folks, we're going to the 11th inning. We got a Roggenberg sighting. Gary Roggenberg coming into the ball game. Pitched only four games the last year. Rated a 76 overall. He's got a 90 mile an hour fastball. No pitches above average. Going to arbitration at the end of the year. That makes sense. Two lefties coming up. Starting with Mike Hegan. Hegan, two for nine. On the season, and he walks. So, he walks, and they're pulling the infield in for that? Oh, corner's in. Because they think he's going to bunt. You couldn't be any more wrong. We're going to hit a run. That's what Rich Rollins does. Nobody out. Runner on first. And a... I don't know. It's... There was a delay there as uh, apparently it was a ground ball to short. And he can advance So we have a chance here with a runner in scoring position to take the lead again. Here is Don Mincher with a 2-1 count. And he pulls it to right field for a base hit. It's a double. It's not a double yet. 30% uh, no, we say no. And the Pilots take the lead 5-4 to four on the RBI single from Don Mincher. Feeling pretty good about ourselves here. Although we do have a lefty on the mound. Oh, man. Oh, McNerdney! Over the green monster, a two-run shot. That gives us a little bit of cushion. McNerdney's first home run on the season. It's 7-4, to four, Seattle. Steve Hovley up next. Ground ball to third, and the third baseman makes an error. Oh, man, we've hung in there long enough that the moguling is on right now. Okay, Fred Stanley, he's earned the right to take a cut. One out, runner on first. Here's Stanley. And he gets drilled right in the belt. Right in the gut. First and second. And Roy, o <laughs> Roy Euler gets to make a, a swing. Let's see how he does with runners on first and second. Oh, he pops it up. That'll be out number two, perhaps. It is. That'll bring it. Leave it up to uh, Steve Whitaker here. Whitaker came in as a pinch hitter. Flips it to right. And it will be caught for out number three. The Pilots put three on the board. We go to the bottom of the 11th inning. It's seven to four. And John Morris, last man standing, facing Fanzone, Yastrzemski, and Locke. Two, three, and four. Here's Fanzone. Skies it to left center field. Caught shy of the warning track by Higgin. One out. Here's Yaz. Lefty on lefty matchup here. Morris faced Yaz yesterday. Got him out. And he strikes him out swinging. There we go. We're down to the final out. Will this be the first win in franchise history? John Morris has to get Don Locke here. Here we go. Two down. First pitch swinging. And he shoots it down the right field line. Off the wall for a double. Don Locks. First double of the year. 
Never can go easily, can it? Okay, that will bring up George Scott. Two down, runner on second. First pitch swinging base hit. Lock will score. Oh, Lock's going to hold it third. Oh, no. Oh, no. That's a three-run home run if I ever saw it. With Rico Petroselli up. Now, he does not hit lefties well. He does not get on base well versus left-handers last year. But one swing of the bat will tie it. And Petroselli's hot out of the gate. He's five for nine. We're not going to guard the lines. We're going to play straight away. Here we go. 1-0 count. Fly ball to center. That is catchable. And the Pilots win game one. 7-4. Handshakes, butt slaps, slap mistakes. Oh, man. That was a tough one as the Pilots get the first victory in franchise history. Let's take a look at the standings. No trade offers. Nobody wants our guys. Well, there's a National League. Everybody's played a game now. Philadelphia 2-0 on the year. Uh, okay, there's the American League. Baltimore 2-0, as you might expect, since they went to the World Series. And we're 1-1. One one. All right, let's take a look at headline news. The Brainiac Baseball Daily Beat. We did update the newspaper name. Um... Indians and Cardinal beat the White Sox. Jose Cardinal drove in four of Cleveland's six runs. Um, yep. Duke Sims went one for three, including a walk. Oh, that's it. Nothing else to be said. Transactions. Let's take a look. Nothing of note. Um, make sure everything's updated. Yeah, okay, so nothing's happening. All right, let's pull up the box score and get out of here. Thanks for watching, guys. Like and or subscribe to the channel. Tomorrow is uh, Sunday, so I don't think I'll be playing the baseball game tomorrow because we do have uh, the 1980 Detroit Lions alternate history uh, to play tomorrow. We're in week seven. We're giving away a Billy Sims autographed jersey uh, in a contest there. And even though we're in week seven, you can still get in on it. If you want to. Um, player of the game. We're going to give it to Jerry McNertney. Who hit the uh, big home run. That gave us the cushion we need. He had three RBI. On the day. A um, lot of unsung heroes. One of them not. Mike Marshall. Who uh, blew a save in his first opportunity. John Morris gets the win. He's 1-0. And Gary Roggenberg takes the loss. He's 0-1. Reggie Smith hit his third home run. Pretty amazing. Okay, we're going to come back on uh, Monday then, I guess, with the third game of the four-game series. Until then, everyone, have a great day.